Hey world, welcome back to the shop. Kind of in process of the next large EV conversion. Uh, this one's going to be all wheel drive Tesla again and the purists are going to love me for it. I'll introduce that in a future video, so stay tuned for that. Also, I got some good 4680 content coming up soon. Um, we've got pretty much all the cells stripped out of that pack, so we're going to have a whole bunch of those for sale. Um, I'll give you a little rundown of that again. In the meantime, got an interesting little EV distraction in the shop I want to introduce you to today. Now, we've had this thing kind of floating around for a little while, really with no direction. Um, but I had a fun little idea for it. And uh, first we got to get it up and running. It was, it came to us as a non-functioning, almost parts vehicle. We were just gonna strip the electrics out of it. Uh, but yeah, I got a fun little idea for it. So we're gonna give that a shot. Um, the project is a 2011 Vantage EV1000 little pickup truck. Um, not typically known for being the most reliable or even the most amount of information available on the internet for these things, but it's got kind of a cool little backstory. Uh, it used to be a little runabout for the Toronto Zoo. Um, yeah, so we're going to make something cool out of it. Yeah, let's get acquainted. So, like I said, this is a 2011 Vantage extended cab. This one did come to us from the Toronto Zoo. So cool little story. It was in non-functioning condition when we got it. All the electronics were there, motor, controller, all the wiring. That stuff is, was present when we got it. it. Was, however, missing the battery pack. Um, no big deal because it was a clunky old lead acid battery. We're going to switch it up to a Chevy Volt lithium ion pack anyway. Um, like every project, I kind of get uh, pretty far ahead of myself. And, you know, I have great intents of videoing stuff for YouTube, but I get excited with projects and start jumping ahead and realize that I didn't follow along with the process that I went through. So, what I did was um, just hooked up some power to it in an effort to diagnose why it doesn't work. Um, got kind of down a little bit of a rabbit hole and have discovered that the, I believe the motor encoder is the trouble. So I'll show you what's going on with that. Um, this is a power dump box too, so this is pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, so the electronics of it are kind of run of the mill. It is an AC motor, 72 volt. It does use the Curtis motor controller, but if I understand it correctly, it does have proprietary Vantage software over it. So I have the uh, laptop version of the Curtis controller software and I seem to be locked out of it for some reason. I don't know if that's a Vantage thing where they don't want you messing with it. I know it is speed limited, so that might have something to do with, with what's going on. Um, so yeah, like I said, I was throwing a code. The motor would spin just very slowly, and uh, you know, after a few seconds, it would throw a code. That code corresponds with the motor encoder, and that is located right here off the end of the shaft. I'll show you. So the cover is off of it, but all that it is is a optical encoder. And the symptoms were exactly like the controller didn't know what the motor speed was. So I've got one of those. Um, I did find the manufacturer of that. So I do have one on order. I'll be here later this week. Um, in the meantime, I have a set of wheel adapters I want to machine up for this. Got kind of a funky idea. I think you'll probably figure it out partway through this video anyway, but I just picked up 
all the uh, aluminum blanks. So we got our blanks cut. I'm gonna load the program in the lathe and then we're gonna start machining up these wheel adapters. All right, got the program loaded up. Man, driving this little truck around sure was a lot of fun. 
I was cruising around in this back field and literally the only sound it was making was a little bit of squeaking from the tracks. Other than that, because it's electric, it was uh, dead silent. A couple things I should clarify. It turns out it doesn't actually have proprietary Vantage software, uh, but it is, however, speed limited, and that is at the request of Vantage. The reason being is the truck obviously meets no crash test standards, so in order for it to be legal, they had to speed limit it. I think it's around 35 miles per hour. Obviously with the tracks on it, I haven't had it up to that sort of speed to verify that, but that's what I learned in the process. So really aside from replacing that motor control or um, motor encoder rather, the only other problem I had with it was it had a BDI reading of 0% because it had no batteries in it for a couple of years probably. Um, yeah, the good folks at Vantage were actually super helpful with that. They found uh, a process I was able to reset that BDI value, even though I was using a different voltage pack, uh, that Chevy Volt pack we were talking about. Yeah, of course, I know it's not practical mounting a set of tracks to a little e-truck, but really that's not the point of this thing. The truck was destined for scrap otherwise, so why not make something cool and have a little fun in the process? Guys, don't be afraid, leave me a comment, let me know what you think of this thing. I'm pretty sure I got a plow kicking around here somewhere too. All right, be good to each other.